It was the ninth week of Dana White's Contender Series when we found ourselves in the Bantamweight division in the hardest matchup I've had to break down this entire time. I, maybe outside of the heavyweights from last week because there was just one guy that didn't have anything on him. But the most difficult to break down that I've seen in a while outside of that heavyweight matchup, and that was only one side of it. Very tricky one here, but let's, let's do our darndest, shall we? We're going to break down this Bantamweight matchup here between Eduardo Matias Torres, and he's taking on Victor Hugo Silva. For Silva, he's 5-0 in the last five. For Torres, he is also 5-0 in the last five. Both guys have a pretty lengthy career so far as far as their wins and losses go. Um, both of them are undefeated in the last five, so there's that. Here's the deal. Victor Hugo Silva has not fought at Bantamweight in quite some time. He's fought at featherweight. He's fought at welterweight. In fact, quite a bit at welterweight, which is weird. Dude's fighting at 135 pounds when he's been fighting at welterweight in a lot of these fights. And a lot of the fights I watched to break down this matchup, he's fighting at welterweight. Really throws me off. For Torres, he's more of a bantamweight. Makes sense. Um, and there are things I really like and really dislike about both of these guys. So maybe just leave this one off your cards, but we're going to break it down anyway for you degenerates. And also, we're going to make a pick because that's just what I do. Now, for Silva, he's a decent striker, and he's going to move forward, and he's going to throw with power. But he's very wild on the feet. Big looping hooks, big overhands. But when he hits you, you feel it. I saw him slump a guy at, at, um, at welterweight. When he weighed in, I believe it was like 165, 166 pounds, something like that. He weighed in for welterweight. Knocks the dude dead. Just boom. Probably not actually dead, but you know what I mean. Done. Knocked out cold. Easy. Okay? So he's got the power, and if he's knocking guys out at welterweight, he hits pretty hard, especially because it was clear he didn't cut weight for that fight if he didn't weigh in even close to the limit. Now, there's that. He is more of a grappler, though, and he's got good takedowns. The problem with, with his grappling that I don't like is that sometimes he just goes for submissions at the worst times and, like, loses position or puts himself in a bad spot. But he does do pretty good on the ground in most instances, and I do think the takedowns here are going to be a weapon that he can use to success. For Torres, he's got some things I really like as well, and that's his standing, most of it. Uh, he's got good, accurate striking, and he's got a very, very heavy calf kick. I wrote accurate up there twice. Did not mean to do that. <laughs> We're going to just erase one of those. He's got accurate striking. He's got heavy calf kick. But the biggest problem for Torres is he just backs up the whole gosh darn time. If he can just land that calf kick and start coming forward with his hands, he'd be great. He'd be a great striker anyway. But he's just not. He's just going to keep backing up. And he's going to throw his punches while backing up. And then he'll throw a big, heavy calf kick which you hear a thud when he hits that, and that's what you want to hear. Um, I've seen him drop guys with it that he does a very good job at that. But then he's going to go right back to backing up, and it drives me absolutely bonkers. If my coach saw me doing that, oh, he'd have murdered me, right? So either way, dude just backs up a lot. When you got a guy coming forward, a guy backing up, optics, all right? So there's that. So he, he is the better striker, but that is just a big concern. He's just always backing up. Now, in the grappling, his takedown defense is horrible, but he has the skills to work his way back up. And we've seen it in all of his fights so far that he's been taken down is he starts to get those feet to the hips, push off, get his way back up. Now, how long can he do that? That's what it's going to come down to because he's going to be taken down, especially when he's backing up the whole time, uh, unless he can land a couple of those big, heavy shots to the calf and start landing some shots over the top and get the finish on the feet. But I think he's going to be taken down by Silva quite a bit. So it's going to be, this is the, the most difficult one to predict. Does Silva even make Bantamweight at this point? I mean, when's the last time we fought at Bantamweight? It's been years. So I'm going to just, on the slightest bit, lean Silva. Mostly because he moves forward and Torres moves back. And I know that's a horrible reason to pick somebody for a fight. But uh, there's just so many unknowns and so much that I really just can't gauge yet on this fight. But let me know if you've got some better information. Because maybe you do. Sometimes you do. And in fact, last week during the heavyweight matchup I spoke of earlier... Many of you in the comments and then on Twitter were able to send me things that I didn't know about. You happen to be at the gym or you happen to, you know, know him personally, apparently. Or like, you know, maybe you, you just, whatever. You happen to know some things and it paid off well because, well, he ended up winning, although by DQ, he did end up winning. So thank you guys for sending me that information. This one is a similar thing. If you know more information, particularly about the Silva side, because he's a big question mark for me about his weight, things like that. But if you know something about Torres as well, I'd appreciate that. Maybe you know about his grappling a little bit better than I do. That would go a long way. Like the video on your way out. Check out all the breakdowns. And if you haven't seen it, check out the gosh darn interview I did with referee Rob. It was a good one. So check it out. See you guys in the next one.